Welcome. I'm Kay Pitchford, the Instructional Coach at Elizabeth Cashwell Elementary. This is the second grade content support video for the fourth quarter. In this video, we will explore building second graders' understanding of pre-multiplication skills. Before we begin to explore the second grade standards, let's review the progression of content between first and second grades. In first grade, students understand that a specific number of items in a set can be grouped in different ways, yet retain the same number of items. This idea of conservation is important as students begin to arrange the same number of items in different ways. Students also understand that objects can be counted in arrays. Early work with tens frames and other arrays have provided students with important experiences in this area. In second grade, students understand that items can be arranged in arrays of up to five by five objects. In first grade, students skip count by fives, tens, and hundreds. In second grade, they also skip count by twos. In first grade, students partition a rectangle into two or four equal shares. In second grade, students partition rectangles into rows and columns of equal size squares and count to find the total. The early experiences in first grade have prepared the second graders to extend their understanding of counting objects or squares and arrays to creating the arrays and using repeated addition to find the total. The one rule that students need to remember when creating their rectangular arrays is that the objects must be neatly arranged in rows and columns. That means that they may use many different types of common classroom manipulatives to create their rectangular arrays. Counters of different kinds, small toys, or even coins are good places to begin. Students should then move on to representing arrays on graph paper. First, by placing small objects on the paper to find the rows and columns and tracing around the entire array. Students may then want to move to tracing each individual square in the rows and columns, then just an outline of the rows and columns to demonstrate the array. Cutting the arrays out of the graph paper is also a great way for students to show their understanding of rows and columns. Using graph paper also prepares students for understanding how arrays can model area in their grades. Students should also be able to write equations with equal add-ins for each model. For instance, students can write 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 6 or 3 plus 3 equals 6 for the first model, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 10 or 5 plus 5 equals 10 for the second model, and 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 equals 12 or 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals 12 for the final model. Each of these equations reinforces the idea of equal groups in preparation for the equal groups that they will experience in multiplication in third grade. Writing the equations as the repeated addition of the number in each row or the repeated addition of the number in each column also builds understanding that leads to the use of the commutative property of multiplication. Students in second grade also gain experience drawing their own models by partitioning rectangles into equal size squares. In this game, Banana Splits, students spin to determine the number of rows and columns to draw in their own rectangle. They then place one of four counters on the total number of squares in the rectangle on the banana split side. The first player to use all of their counters wins the game. Playing games is a good way to introduce, practice, or review concepts throughout the year. Two sample tasks for partitioning rectangles have been provided by DPI. In both tasks, students are asked to partition the rectangle into a certain number of rows and columns and to count the total number of squares they drew. Folding rectangles into equal square-like regions would provide students with a way to explore partitioning before recording onto their sheets. These activities also further build students' understanding of how arranging squares in rows and columns create a rectangular array.
A word of caution. An internet search of standard 2G2 might lead to questions about area. Please avoid these activities. In second grade, the students focus on arranging items into arrays and partitioning rectangles. However, in this first example, students are asked to count the unit squares to determine the area of a shape. Activities that relate directly to multiplication should also be avoided. Although the second grade skills prepare students for multiplication, understanding and using multiplication begins in third grade. Although it may be tempting to use these activities, it is important to understand that these activities are not aligned to second grade standards and will fail to fully prepare students to engage in learning about area and multiplication in the third grade. To recap, second grade standards prepare students for area and multiplication by creating arrays with objects, drawing arrays on graph paper, partitioning a rectangle into equal size squares arranged in rows and columns, skip counting by the number of objects or squares in each row or each column to find the total, and writing an equation with equal add-ins to show how to find the total number of objects in an array. Participating in these activities will help our second graders build the knowledge and understanding they need in order to be successful with multiplication and area in the third grade.